Are you less concerned than I am about the lack of experience between Brady and his receiving core here this year? I think Brady put it perfectly the other day. Look, this is a work in progress, and I think this offense is going to struggle, and I'm going to put up my air quotes here, and I want to use struggle yeah. in, say, the Kansas City Chiefs, you know, phrase, not not so much the New England Patriots phrase, as all of these disparate parts in the passing game continue to come together. I, I, I think that there's a chance that they're going to lose games that they would usually win earlier in the year because of that. But I think ultimately, by December, history tells us that this group, specifically the passing game, Brady, Belichick, the rest of them, they're going to find a way to figure it out. Look, these, off, these, these young offensive guys, these young skill position guys, Sudfeld, Tompkins, Boyce, Dobson, they're starting to come together. They're not maybe where they need to be right now, but I think with a, a, you know, uh, the preseason behind them, training camp behind them, they're getting closer. I, look, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and tell you this is the 2007 passing game. I'm not going to do that. But I, I will say that this group is headed in the right direction. So who ends up being at the start of the season, or do we know yet, Brady's primary receiving option or the kind of default option when he needs to just get the ball out? The closest thing to a default receiver right now is Amendola. Amendola has been far and away the best wide receiver in camp, looked very crisp when it comes to running his roots, uh, been doing all the right things, been working very hard to get on the same page with Brady, going all the way back to the spring when they were out of USC. If there's a guy who you can put down for 80-something receptions, it's going to be Danny Amendola based on what we've seen to this point. Also, based on what we've seen at this point in his career, it's fairly safe to assume he might not make it through the, an entire NFL season. Yeah, you know, I mean, that, that has to figure into it as well. Look, you know, it, it's unfair to, to stack up Amendola's overall durability with Welker because Welker, quite frankly, was one of the most durable guys in the league, not just at the wide receiver position. But, yeah, I mean, he has to prove that he can string together a full 16-game season in this offense. I, I do think that, and we've seen this throughout training camp, I do think his... Uh, offensive shorthand with Josh McDaniels has has worked. But, uh, again, I, I think that you bring up an excellent point, Dale. I, I think that he needs to prove that he needs to string together a full 16-game season. If he can do that, like I said, you're looking at a guy who can get 80-something passes in this offense. If you can't, they're going to have to look elsewhere to, you know, to, to, to find a guy who can be a consistent target for Brady. Isn't it fairly safe to assume that Rob Gronkowski will likely not see the field until Game 7? Yeah, I, I think I, I think at this point that that's a real safe bet. Look, I, I, and, and I think at this point, and I've talked about this with Ryder on a couple of occasions, that I, I think you need to start to consider how do you, how you're going to use Rob Gronkowski. I think this year in particular, and, and I think the pup list I think is an excellent shot. It, I, I think he has an excellent shot starting the year on the pup list this year, because I think really you need to start measuring his snaps. I think the Patriots need to start to realize that. Uh, a December game against the Texans for Gronkowski is more important than a September game against the Bills. And I think they're going to start to look at it thusly. Chris, to my mind, this is the most drastic change in the Patriots offense since the 2006 season. Not the 2007 to me when they brought in Welker and Randy Moss because, you know, they were bringing in insanely talented guys who were established with track records. Uh, how do you view this often, the offense this year relative to where you saw it at this stage in 2006? I think the biggest difference, Alex, and I think that's an excellent point, I think though the biggest difference is in the running game. I think the running game is far more consistent now than it was back in 2006. Uh, I think when you're looking at a guy like Stephen Ridley, who ran for 1,200 yards last year, one of the best single seasons for any back under 24 in the history of the franchise, I think that's important to consider. I think Ridley has an excellent shot at doing something that no other running back has ever done in the Bill Belichick system, going all the way back to his days in Cleveland, and that's run for back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons. Corey Dillon hasn't done it. Antoine Smith didn't do it. I think Ridley this year has an excellent shot at doing that. I think Shane Vereen is going to be a really interesting offensive option for this team. He's going to take over a lot of the, 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 the work that was done by Danny Woodhead and Aaron Hernandez. They've been moving him all over the field. He's been playing a bit of a joker role so far through training camp. I want to see where he lines up tonight to, to kind of get a sense of where he is. For more, visit weei.com slash video.